The history of the Netherlands, or Holland, is complex. From defying Imperial Spain, moving its stadtholder, William of Orange, to become King of England, to founding a global empire, buying Manhattan, and inventing capitalism. It also went through the ownership of many different European dynasties, such as the Spanish and the Austrian Habsburgs, to no ownership at all when it became a republic, influenced by the American and French revolutions. And during the Napoleonic Wars, it briefly became a part of the French Empire as well. It was during this turbulent time that a Bonaparte briefly became the King of Holland, and that he was a surprisingly a good and popular king. Today, we will discuss the circumstances in which Louis Bonaparte became King of Holland, his short but popular reign, and his eventual abdication. In the late 1700s, France went through the French Revolution. It beheaded its king and became a republic with radical ideas that challenged the world order of the day. These liberal ideas spread across all of Europe. And the Netherlands, which was under the rule of a not so popular republican regime backed by England and Prussia, went through their own revolution, called the Batavian Revolution, with the help of French republican forces. This led to the creation of the Batavian Republic which was a genuine populist revolt of the time. Although independent in name, it was a sister republic to the French First Republic and effectively a client state. And after the creation of the French Empire under Napoleon, the Batavian Republic would be absorbed. Feeling that the Batavian Republic was too independent for its liking, Napoleon replaced it with the Kingdom of Holland on 5 June 1806 and placed his brother, Louis, on the throne. During his early years, he served under Napoleon on his various campaigns and was an instrumental figure in overthrowing the French Republic and its government, called a Directory, for his brother Napoleon to seize power and eventually become the Emperor of France. Napoleon had intended for his younger brother to be little more than a French prefect of Holland. However, Louis had his own mind and tried to be a responsible and independent ruler. In an effort to endear himself to his adopted country, he tried to learn the Dutch language. He called himself Lodovic I, which is an adopted Dutch form of his name Louis, and declared himself Dutch rather than French. Allegedly, his Dutch was initially so poor that he told the people he was the Konijn van Oland, which means the rabbit of Oland, rather than Koning van Holland, which means king of Holland. However, his sincere efforts to learn Dutch earned him some respect from his subjects. Now having declared himself Dutch, Louis tried to make his court Dutch as well. He forced his court and ministers, mostly provided by Napoleon, to speak only Dutch, and also to renounce their French citizenship. Louis could also never settle in a location for his capital city while he was in Holland. He changed capitals over a dozen times, trying Amsterdam, The Hague, and Utrecht, and other places. On one occasion, after visiting the home of a wealthy Dutch merchant, he liked the place so much that he had the owner evicted so he could take up residence there. Then Louis moved again after seven weeks. His constant moving kept the court in upheaval since they had to follow him everywhere. The European diplomatic corps went so far as to petition Bonaparte to remain in one place so they could keep up with him. Two major tragedies occurred during the reign of Louis Bonaparte. The explosion of a cargo ship loaded with gunpowder in the heart of the city of Leiden in 1807, and a major flood in Holland in 1809. In both instances, Louis personally and effectively oversaw local relief efforts, which helped earn him the title of Louis the Good. Napoleon appeared disappointed and commented, Brother, when they say of some king or other that he is good, it means that he has failed in his rule. In fact, Napoleon would inundate Louis with immensely rude letters throughout his reign, complaining that he was too good-natured to be the kind of rough, uncompromising monarch that he needed. A typical letter would read, If you continue to govern by whining, if you allow yourself to be bullied, you will be even less used to me than the Grand Duke of Baden is. You tire me needlessly. Your ideas are narrow, and you have little interest in the common cause. Don't come and plead poverty anymore. 
I know the Dutch well. Only women cry and complain, men take action. If you are not more energetic, you will end up in a situation that will make you regret your weakness. More energy, more energy. Louis Bonaparte's reign was short lived due to two factors. The first was that Napoleon wanted to reduce the value of French loans from Dutch investors by two thirds, meaning a serious economic blow to the Netherlands. The second factor was the one that became the pretext for Napoleon's demand of Louis's abdication. As Napoleon was preparing an army for his invasion of Russia, he wanted troops from the entire region under his control, the Allied border countries. This included troops from the Netherlands. Louis, confronted by his brother's demand, refused point blank. Napoleon then accused Louis of putting Dutch interests above those of France and removed most of the French forces in Holland for the coming war in the East, leaving only about 9,000 garrison soldiers in the country. Unfortunately for Louis, the English landed an army of 40,000 in 1809 in an attempt to capture Antwerp and Flushing. With Louis unable to defend his realm, France sent 80,000 militiamen, commanded by the future king of Sweden, Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, and successfully repelled the invasion. Napoleon then suggested that Louis should abdicate, citing Louis's inability to protect Holland as a reason. Louis refused, and declared the occupation of the kingdom by a French army as unlawful. On 1st of July, 1810, Louis abdicated in favor of his second son, Napoleon Louis Bonaparte. He fled from Harlem on 2nd of July and settled in Austria, and Napoleon annexed Holland to France on the 9th. His request to visit the Netherlands was denied several times by future King of the Netherlands, King William I, but eventually in 1840 he was allowed to visit the country. Although traveling in the Netherlands under a false name, some people found out that it was their former king, which led to a cheering crowd gathering under the window of his hotel room. It is said that he was quite moved by this demonstration of affection from his former subjects. In many ways, Louis was a good king, continuing the unification of the country from federated provinces and enacting local government reforms, stripping the departments and local elites of influence in 1807. The ancient guilds were abolished in 1808, and the justice system was rationalized in 1809. Of all the kings Napoleon created around his empire, Louis was one of the only leaders that genuinely loved his subjects and put the interests of those he ruled first, instead of being merely Napoleon's representative. This puts this rather unknown foreign king who only ruled for a brief period as, in my opinion, one of the greatest leaders in the history of the Netherlands.